Hi everybody, it's Don and Donna Ray from Oceanside Farms. In this video, we'll be studying harvesting and care of fruits. So as you start putting your orchard together, you'll be looking for an orchard ladder. You can see that this is just a three-legged ladder and the center leg is just a pole and it can kind of swing maybe 20 degrees out of whack just so you can position your ladder in different positions around the tree without breaking branches or there and here's what a ladder looks like on the ground we're using 10 foot ladders this apple tree is 30 years old Donna Ray and I just picked 250 pounds off of it after two other families had picked remember you're planting apple trees for future generations note the apple bag hanging an apple bag is super handy the bottom opens up and so you can just set it down and the apples roll out the bottom instead of bruising them or have to pick up each one individually. A pole with a basket on the end really comes in handy for reaching those hard to reach places where your ladder won't get underneath there. And a garden cart, five gallon buckets, milk crates are all a must. Use your dropped apples first as they don't store very well. Keep your orchard clean, it draws slugs and wasps. Michael Phillips has written a couple of good books on orchard care and growing of fruits. He has a couple of YouTube videos out, one at Living Web Farm. Excellent. You'll be looking for some bins. These ones stack well in a small space and then turn and they stack so as to not squish the product below. These ones have lids that fold up, and then the far ones there are milk crates. A good digital scale comes in really handy for knowing how much you pick. So this is a Norland apple, uh, another early variety. Uh, good producer, got to pick it at the right time or it gets soft. So once again, you just kind of pick up on the apple and it comes off in your hand. You know it's ripe. This one's got a little bit of scabbing on there, I would say, or sunburn. I'm not sure which looks more like sunburn than scab to me now that I look at it. But I would just see brown seeds. We're ready to rock and roll. Seeds turn brown the when the fruit is ripe. Pick Norlin a few days before they get ripe. Tastes good. As they sweet, get soft. A little soft compared to the Parkland. The Parkland's not quite ripe yet, so all in all, a really good apple and ready to pick. When picking apples, just lift up on it. See, that came right off. <laughs> now you taste that and think it, see if it, you think it's ripe. <laughs> Very ripe. Because we tasted about two weeks ago and there's still that tart, chalky taste in your mouth. Mm -hmm. No, these are good, sweet. This one is Prairie Magic. And this one is a water sprout that's been trimmed back and now there are apples on the water sprouts and right here you can see the apple spur and when you pick up on the apple it just comes right off and leaves the spur. The spur has next year's crop in it so you don't want to disturb the spur. Example of a underripe apple. The seeds are just turning brown. Some white, some brown. When picking soft fruits, pears and peaches and nectarines, don't pile them too deep in your buckets as they bruise very easily. And when you're picking the berries, same story. Don't pile them too deep. When picking small fruits like cherries, get a small bucket. Tie it around your neck. Put a hook on it around your belt or on a ladder and enjoy. Okay, once you get your apples, what do you do? So in this picture, we're sweating apples. It really smells good under there, but um, have a loose tart on a pile of apples, get some airflow around them. This builds the sugar, so they can sit like this for up to two weeks, and the sugar's just gonna get more. Sweating on a commercial scale. 
My friend Chuck got this beautiful press for Christmas. It's got a press on one end and a grinder, electric grinder on the other end. So you drop your apples in the grinder, falls into that basket, slide it over to the press basket, and away you go. In this picture, we're running the apples through a food processor. They get ground up and then they drop into a bag in the lower part of the machine, which is a hydraulic press. It has nine tons of pressure. In this photo, we're leveling the apple mash in the top of the press bag. In this photo, the press is starting to squeeze and this is what we've been waiting for. It's good to have a variety of apples in your juice. It just makes a more rounded, better tasting juice. Here we are mixing the apples so we get a nice mix into the press. And then we put them into one gallon jugs for sales and one gallon jugs minus a pint for the freezer. Apples put off an ethylene gas that makes other fruits and vegetables ripen quickly. And so in your root cellar, you might want to keep them in plastic bins with lids to keep the ethylene away from your other vegetables. This is our root cellar for potatoes and apples. A home air conditioner. Size the room a bit smaller than the instructions. Tied to a cool bot. It turns the temperature down on the air conditioner to be like a refrigerator. So when you're harvesting, just go ahead and freeze your berries and take care of them later in the year because everything's happening fast. And we summer. find that when you're freezing your berries, if you smash them, then you can get all the air out. Otherwise, you'll have some air damage maybe by the time you're ready to use your berries. So you can make the most delicious applesauce and you can dry apples, they're wonderful, and you can make an apple cake. And if you have a sweet tooth, apple roses. Sell your fruits and berries first, and then do cottage foods with them, and then store them in the freezer for wintertime use. Mid-September, we picked 12 pounds of strawberries today. This is at our roadside stand, a little signage goes a long way. It's an eye catcher. We can't keep the cider on the shelf. Ty and Christy are selling their apples at the local grocery store. Tasting apple varieties is always fun. And you can get custom made apple bags for your apple sales. Keep your apples in the refrigerator if they're ripe and let them sweat if they're a little under ripe and ripen up on a warm dry spot. Try espalier for easy harvest. I think it's French for tied to fence. But we stopped by Michael O'Brien's orchard in Nikiski and he's got all kinds of stuff growing there. Plums and pears and peaches and nectarines and cherries. All indoors of course. We haven't had any luck with those outside but it just takes the right rootstock and the right cultivar and we'll really have some good growing going on. Michael and John and Christy can do custom grafting for you if you have a favorite cultivar. We're all a little short on labor, so you pick might be the good way to go for your farm. It's good to have your prices posted so people know how much they're gonna spend and keep your farm close to the road so you don't have to walk too far with a load on. Don't forget, your apples don't taste good unless they're ripe. So brown seeds means a ripe apple. This next picture is Almada. It's a beautiful apple, red all the way through. I would definitely recommend that one for your orchard as a specialty fruit. This is how the tree looks. It has pink flowers, just beautiful. Parkland would be a good one. Norland would be another good one for you. Wolf River would be a good choice for a Baking apple, trailman crab would be a great one, sweet apple, honey crisp for a long-term storage apple, state fair, beautiful red apple, almost like a fairy tale. Whitney crab would be a good one, very prolific. So happy harvesting and don't carry too much of a load at one time. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. 
This is Don and Donna Ray signing off from Oceanside Farms in Homer. Thanking Callie and everybody involved in the Small Farms Project, including Robbie Townsend Venel, with funding provided from the USDA 2501 program.